Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Avant Quads Nexa 3 HD. Yeah, this is the HD version, so we have the air unit light, what we uh, used to call the Cadex Vista in the back, and we have the Nebula Pro camera up front here, so that's uh, 120 frames per second, so we have high quality and low latency mode available to us. And before we get started, it's probably best that I disclose that I'm a fan of Avant Quads. Uh, I appreciate how they're built. I appreciate the fact that they're well tuned. Uh, I appreciate the fact that I have not had a bad experience or even a mildly poor experience with any of the Avant Quads quads that I have flown. And therefore, I need your help to kind of level out my bias and uh, leave your thoughts of those of you that have had an Avant Quads quads down in the comment section below. It's very important, especially for those people who you know, might be new to FPV or they're just new to the Avant Quads brand. So if you would take a moment to uh, leave your experience with your Avant Quad down in the comment section, I'm sure that would help more than a few people out. I think the biggest complaint that I hear about is the cost of the shipping uh, with Avant Quads. And uh, down in the video description below, I have got a coupon code for you that should help to offset some of the shipping, I believe. Avant Quads always ships DHL, which in my case, DHL is the fastest, most reliable shipping. I don't know how it works in other parts of the world, but here in the U.S., I think DHL is probably the most reliable and the quickest shipper. So that's probably a reason why it costs a little bit for shipping, but that coupon code should help. Uh, let's go through the uh, parts and the components and we'll take it out for a fly. One last thing before we get to the uh, specs of the components, I do fly it in all the flight footage that you'll see with the Insta360 GO 2 as well as the mount that it does come with. And I do have a complaint about the mount is it's not quite tight enough to ensure in a tumble that it won't come out because I actually had that happen and thankfully I walked right up to this little tiny camera laying in the lawn. Lucky me. The all-in-one flight controller is more of a rectangle shape and that is the JHEMCU GF240 all-in-one flight controller which has a 35 amp ESC for UARTs. It does come pre-tuned and has Betaflight 4.2.11 on it. And as I mentioned, we have the Cadex Vista or Air Unit Light for our video transmission as well as the Nebula Pro camera. The motors powering the Nexa 3 HD is the TC1404 4600 KV Brother Hobby Motors. The props are the Gemfan 3016 tri-bladed props. TPU mounting the camera up front here does have the ability to shift the camera back if you wanted to get a little bit more camera protection. This is about the maximum angle you can get without getting too much of that TPU in your FPV view. The antenna in the back is also mounted with a TPU print. And the last TPU print is the one down in there and it's holding the capacitor. It comes with a metal battery strap and we also have a texturized rubber battery mat. We've got some of my favorite tape holding down the motor wires onto the arms. The arms are independent pieces so you can replace each arm by taking out just two bolts. Top plate is one and a half millimeters thick. Bottom plate is also one and a half millimeters thick. Bottom sandwich plate is one and a half millimeters thick. Arms are four millimeters thick. And the thinnest point on the arms are six millimeters wide. Motor post to motor post looks about 142 millimeters. It weighs 137 and three quarter grams. I flew it exclusively on an 850 milliamp 4S battery just like this one, which brings our weight up to 234 and a half grams. As I stated previously, I also flew it with the Insta360 GO 2 and the mount, which brings my all up flying weight to 265 and three quarter grams. As we're sitting here on the table, you can't see that pine tree out in front of us. It's moving around a touch. Uh, the winds were of recorded you know 12 to 17 miles an hour but you know i have all sorts of protection with the houses and the other trees although not as much protection with out all the leaves on the trees and this is obviously not the uh view from the insta360 go 2 this is actually the view from the nebula pro and uh, i think this is still the camera that most people at least that's what I hear most people for the Vista or the air unit light uh, are looking for. And thankfully, you know, it's back on the market. It seems to be readily available, and hopefully everyone can buy one if they're wanting one. But this one is really good overall performance. Uh, you know, you're not going to find it to be the top, you know, punch-out performer, and it's not going to have the actual longest flight time for something in this uh, three-inch category. But overall, it's got very good punch out, it's got very good performance, and it's got good flight time. We're gonna get over a four minute flight with this 850 milliamp battery flying in this particular style with 
I think in this case, I'm doing far more, you know, high flying, 100% throttle maneuvers than I typically do, uh, just because this one can handle it so well, and it seems to be efficient enough to where I don't feel the battery sag out until very late in the battery. So if you're looking for those sorts of things, then uh, this might be a quad you want to check out. Of course, go down to those comments and see what other people's experiences are with other Avant quads. Uh, maybe they even have this one that can tell you a little bit about their experience. Something I should have mentioned in the intro in the beginning is that, you know, I haven't heard about anyone having a bad experience with support. Um, I've had a few people that have indicated that they've reached out to support and maybe the support response was a bit delayed. We kind of find that across the board when it comes to uh, companies in the East that it just, it takes them a little bit longer to respond to our requests. I'm wondering if that doesn't come from some of the automated or work responses that we get within our uh, professional careers or jobs to where you know we have somebody on site that responds to our support needs whereas you know this is one company they're generally all the quad companies are relatively small and you know only having a person maybe two that responds to all the different requests but you know again go down in the comment section do your research look at how other people uh, are explaining or talking about their experiences and get a good feel for it these don't come free or cheap though that's something that uh, I guess I could have said is one of the other complaints I hear about is the cost. Uh, this particular one with the air unit light or the Vista comes in at $359. Of course, I've got that coupon code which uh, can help offset some of that cost, whether it's the cost of purchase or the cost of shipping. Uh, you kind of get your pick there. Uh, of course, we've got the uh, air unit light in here, which is, you know, with that camera, we're seeing that go for 160 bucks more than the analog counterparts. They do have an analog version available. You can get that one. Uh, that one comes in at about 120 to 130 dollars less. And when you go to their website, there's other options for things like the mount for the HD camera is an extra. You do have to pay for that. Of course, if you have a printer, you could print your own or design your own, however you want to go about it. Uh, you can buy replacement arms. You can ask for extra props, extra battery straps. It's got this little uh, drop-down list of different things that you can select and you know get your spare parts if you think you're going to need one. I have heard of a few arms breaking, not on this particular one because it's pretty new, but on Avant Quads. That's probably the one thing I've heard probably about five or six times of breaking arms, which isn't necessarily surprising. You know, you fly these things long enough, you fly and have as much fun as you can, and eventually you're going to get a little bit sideways, you know, make a mistake, error in your line, or try to hit a gap and you just didn't quite make it. And, you know, breaking an arm is sure better than breaking a motor or you know completely busting out your flight control but you know this one flies really really well and I think I probably stressed all the other aspects rather than how well this flies it's one of them that I really enjoy and I'm gonna keep uh, we've come in at the end of our flight there let's go to a slow cruisy flight to give you some sort of idea of how long it will fly if you fly it nice and smooth and slow a little bit more wind on this particular day as you saw that tree the same tree that sits out in front and I always fly in between them um, only when I'm doing tuning, it seems like, do I not fly out between those two trees. I don't know why that is. Maybe that's just a habit of mine. Uh, I'm not going to show the whole flight because I don't think anybody wants to see the whole flight. But if you like exploratory flying and you're looking at this and you're saying, well, I don't, I don't like to fly fast. I don't like to take those risks. I just want to go out and kind of feel free like a bird and just kind of go around where I want to go then this gives you a sample of that sort of flight. Maybe it's a touch slower. Uh, I don't have any you know, flips or rolls or punch outs that I do in this flight. I just kind of go around. And uh, so this flight can, again, on an 850 milliamp 4S battery, and it can definitely handle a larger battery. I would say you wouldn't want to probably go above 1100 milliamp 4S, but you know, there's potential there depending upon your flight style that you may want to try that out. This flight goes on on that battery for over seven minutes. So pretty good efficiency. I would like to see kind of an ultra performance version of this. This was something that I thought about when I was laying in bed after flying it for about a week was that, you know, we've kind of gotten away in our 1400 series motors from the traditional motor uh, that had the, what is it, the M3 motor shaft. We've gone down to these, you know, 1404, 1405, even smaller motors uh, to gain that efficiencies. And they've performed pretty well, surprisingly. But I, you know, I have that need every once in a while for just raw performance and, and power. And going to, say, a 1507 or a, uh, a 1408 
I would be curious what this would fly like with that, because I, you know, it's definitely going to handle the extra weight of an HD camera just fine, and it handles the Vista just fine uh, with uh, the 1400 series motor. So if we pump that up to one of those traditional motors that isn't the T-mount prop, I think it's an M3 shaft. It's kind of been so long since we've seen that. It's especially in micros, we just kind of got away from that about what was it two years ago now that we just started seeing these T-mount style motors kind of take over. But anyways, that was kind of something I was thinking about as I was laying in bed. Is I wonder what this flies like with a, a beefier motor that can really uh, spin that prop, give you that throwback in your chair when you hit the punch out over the house. Because uh, that's something that I do enjoy. And this is the view from the Insta360 Go. It's kind of a, a additional proof of concept that yes, I was flying it with the Insta360 Go. I'm just not telling you that. Of course, if you take the Insta360 Go off and the extra weight of the mount as well, you're going to get more flight time. That's just kind of how things work. You, you decrease your load, you get more flight time. Uh, so you know, take that into consideration when you're looking at the flight time. On a slow cruisy flight that goes over seven minutes, you probably get. I'd say anywhere from 20 to 40 more seconds, maybe even a minute, but depending upon the size of your battery that you're flying. And if you're flying faster, it's going to be about the same when you take off that load because that Insta360 GO 2 camera is not a light camera. The Caddx Peanut, I believe, is actually lighter, but I don't have one, so I've just stuck with my GO 2 camera. I think it's a pretty good sample, a couple of minutes of the slow cruisy flight. Again, seven minutes on an 850 milliamp 4S battery. You could go up to an 11, maybe even a 12 for this sort of flight style. Just exploratory cruise around, free as a bird sort of flight. But let's take a look at my crash. I had one dramatic crash. Okay, obviously it's a different day. We have a little brighter sunlight and this is the go-to view because I thought it was kind of fun because it does eject on this crash. And as we take off, this won't last long. I won't make you sit through three and a half minutes of flight to see the crash. It actually happens in about 45 seconds. Um, I just, you know, you make a mistake and then you get a little low and you catch a prop or you catch an arm and then you go tumbling. And uh, that happens from time to time. And uh, I chose the go-to view just because, well, the camera goes tumbling and so it gives you a better idea of uh, kind of the impact. Maybe I should show the other camera. Ah, we could show the other camera after this. But, you know, just doing the things I do. It's a nice day out. It's sunny. It's not terrible windy, so it's not bitter cold. But uh, just out flying, having some fun. And, you know, it's a little bit later in the day. You know, the sun goes down at like 4.50 now. So when you get up, you come home from work, and, oh, I'm going to punch out of the house. This is where the crash is going to come. I'm just going to not recover quite enough. And, blep. Well, I finally had a crash. Yep. Camera went laying in a different part of the yard. And, uh, yeah. So it's time to go get the quad, which I think you can see me in the camera view. I go walking to get the quad. Yeah, there I go. Going to get the quad, but a little while later, I come back and I find the camera. Lucky enough, I just walked right up to the camera. Uh, let's take a look at that same crash with our uh, Nebula Pro view, our actual in-goggle view. We'll cut right down to the section here where I just go for the crash uh, so that you get an idea of the tumbling of the quad. Before we get down to discussing the frame and the build and we take a closer look at the build quality and some of the other things, I, I just want to reiterate one thing about this quad that I don't think I hit very hard during the flight footage is, is this is a very good all-around performer. It's not, again, going to have the biggest punch outs of the most outright speed, but it does kind of two things very, very well. It's definitely a freestyle quad. You've got the top mounted battery, which isn't something we get a lot of, but we've seen it from time to time. So it can definitely be one of those quads that you go out and you do your tricks with, your inverted yaw spins, shooting gaps, what have you. But it can also be a nice exploratory, smooth cruiser sort of quad. It doesn't have, you know, gigantic notchy motors on it that give you a vibration in your FPV view or suck down your battery juice to where you can't fly it very long. So in that regard, it's... As far as my experience goes, this competes very, very well with everything else on the market. And in some cases, it competes very, very well with the larger propped three and a half inch quads that we've seen on the market as well. So if you're kind of teetering around about what you should go for, I would definitely take a look at this. Of course, price is a consideration. Again, I do have a coupon code, which Avant Quads has given me in order to be able to help offset a little bit of that. And I, they may be offering a free shipping for a limited time. I do think I had some communication about free shipping uh, right here around the holidays. But uh, go down in the video description. I'll have some more details about that. 
So one of the things I wanted to show you was if you have a little balance lead on out here and waggling around, you know, you don't want that waggling down here and getting in your prop line. So we need to secure that down. Uh, one of the ways I do that is just with another rubber band, just wrap this around here a couple of times. And then I'm going to go around the battery, you know, pretty simple stuff, but you know, it can be something that many of you have been doing and others of you might be going, oh, well, that's an easy way. I'm not doing a very good job here on camera, but hopefully you get the point. Oh, it's so sloppy. My battery or my rubber band is a little bit bigger than the one I was using outside. And then you put this in your, your strap, you strap it down and then I would put I would connect the battery over here on the side, which keeps it relatively taut. You could plug it in and then tuck this inside your battery strap. I didn't feel that was necessary, but it's an extra step you could take. So one of the things I mentioned early on was how you, you can't get a lot of camera angle without you starting to get this uh, pro camera protection into your view. This is about the max angle that I found, which is a little bit surprising because it doesn't look like it's all that far up. I did have it further up and then I could see a little bit of this, I think it's a teal, maybe an aqua color. Uh, print so I shoved the camera down just a touch but if you wanted that extra camera angle you could just take a soldering iron or anything to just kind of remove this TPU print and you know clear your view uh, you can probably see from there it's kind of got a, a two different angles we've got this lower angle then we've got the upper angle in order to be able to give you a little bit of uh, flexibility with your camera angle but if you get it up much higher than what I've got it you're going to start to see this a little bit and if that bothers you you can clear that out with you could even snip it off with a uh, wire snips or something like that we do have this print down here at the bottom which does help protect this screw so if you come sliding across you know asphalt or cement that would help a little bit but you're still going to have all these other screws and that was one other thing that I thought they might be able to do is to make some of those uh, we haven't seen them on micros really, but they're like these little pads that you put out on the motors that allow you to land on asphalt and cement and then your motor or your uh, screws don't scrape across the asphalt and the ground and get all scuffed up and possibly cause problems when it comes to removing them. Uh, that's something else that I think they could do to add a little bit of value. Uh, you can see there we've got motor protection out here on the ends. A lot of people like to see that as well as we only use three screws, which is fine in my opinion. Uh, you can also see we've got a connector here co connecting the Vista. So if for whatever reason you're doing a repair and you need to remove the Vista, that makes it pretty simple. You can just disconnect it with that connector and take the Vista out of your way. Uh, we have this split back here on the antenna. So that does allow you to pull the antenna out without having to take the mount out. Again, it can be uh, an issue where it makes your repairs just a little bit more handy. Uh, you can see the flight controller is soft mounted. A little flex there and you can see we've got metal nuts on that top of the sandwich plate there now I haven't taken this apart to look at it but I presume that there's a void in the arm that means if we need to remove the flight stack we have to remove the arms I think and something I didn't call out in the uh, quick specs is we I mentioned it having a bottom plate and a second sandwich plate. They're actually two different plates. We have this bottom plate, which goes from the cam from the nose where our camera is uh, to the rear of the arms. And then we have the top bottom plate, which goes from the tail end up through the front arms. So we have kind of a two layer camera plate. So we have uh, standoffs that are gonna be different heights. So if you were to buy a frame kit and wanna build that, your short standoffs go in the back and the longer ones go in the front. Uh, just a, a little minor thing. It did come with a battery pad already on it, so you don't have to worry about mounting that up. And they did zip tie the wire for your battery connection down here. You can see it starts in the back of the flight controller, runs underneath, zip ties down. We've got a little bit of a, it's not straight line or taut, which is, you know, again, it's one of the things I appreciate about the, the build quality. Uh, they've got that zip tied down. So if you do have a battery ejection and it pulls on this, at first, it'll pull on this. Now, depending upon how tight your battery is connected, does it just eject or does it keep a hold, you know, tension? That zip tie could break, but hopefully enough of the force has been reduced where it won't pull it off uh, your uh, ESC back here. And it's really the best thing you can do is to zip tie it down. Uh, I suppose you, there are other techniques that some people have, but commonly, you know, zip tying these things down is... Kind of the way to do this in my opinion take a little look at the soldering on here see what you think of that let me get zoomed in see the soldering that 
they've done at the factory when they assemble these things. You can also see how that top TPU mount in the flight stack is holding on the capacitor. That's a really good idea. You know, having a capacitor that comes loose, you know, all of a sudden you have noise in your video, but you look at your capacitor and it looks good, but it's not actually connected. This helps to ensure that that capacitor doesn't wiggle around and come loose eventually. I mentioned it in the quick specs, you know, we've got this battery strap with a metal buckle. I always appreciate that. And if we look at the uh, top plate, we can see how it's kind of got this area where the battery should go and it shouldn't slide around as long as you get it reasonably tight. If your battery does shift, uh, the rubberized, texturized battery mat will help the battery not shift too much. And then having the battery strap in this position to where it has these notches in the front and the rear that will keep it from moving too far plus we've also got standoffs in the front that keeps it going from you know if you're in extreme circumstances if you're going plaid into a, a concrete wall or something it shouldn't shift past that but i suspect you probably have other worries if you end up doing that uh, you note that I don't have a receiver in mind. I did use the DJI remote, which for a big remote and me is a little bit of an oddity because I do like that remote. It's not perfect, but as far as the big remotes go, that's the one I'm most comfortable with. So when I review these, I prefer to just not have the receiver and connect and just use the DJI remote, the black one uh, that you know we use with these particular quads. One last thing, you could kind of see, hopefully, that the cabling from the camera back to the Vista on how it's kind of secured underneath there. Let me get these props a little bit more out of the way. It's secured underneath there, uh, underneath our TPU print, kind of within the flight stack before it gets back here to the Vista. You know, that's a little tiny thing that we don't always see from all manufacturers. Sometimes that is just kind of hanging loose or it's maybe at most been taped up to shorten the length to make it kind of taut so it doesn't wiggle around too much uh, but they've secured it down inside there if you were to be so inclined say if you're building you see we have that hole here and we have a matching hole here you can get a standoff right there to give your top plate a little extra rigidity uh, you can see there as i squeeze it it does flex a little bit Probably not a terrible idea, but you're going to have to do something different with your uh, capacitor in order to be able to run that down there because that hole lines up right where the capacitor is. And that's why mine doesn't have this. But of course, I didn't see any ill effect from not having that post. Uh, but you might be inclined to want to have that post, especially if you're going to be building this frame out. Yeah, I enjoyed the uh, Nexa 3 HD. A lot of fun. Very versatile in my opinion and of course we've got that bias that you know i really like their quads i like how they're built i like how they the flight feel i like the fact that they do pre-tune them and they're tuned really well so you know you kind of have to kind of listen to me a little bit but maybe you should go down to that comment section as i suggested earlier and see what other people think of their avant quads Again, I've got that coupon code. I've mentioned it a couple times down there. I want to try to save you a little bit of money if you do want to take advantage uh, of that and buy an Avant Quads. The coupon code is only for buying and flies. So if you're buying parts or frames or anything like that, the coupon code doesn't apply. It's only for the buying and flies. And uh, of course, I'll have a link in the video description down there to uh, this particular Nexa 3 HD as well as the analog version. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know down there in the comment section below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.